the crap that's in here. You gonna tell your dirty diaper out of the kitchen. Record you too. Record. We don't care about nothing. I know you don't. I know you don't. And make sure you tell him you told me to shut up. Because you told me you. you what did you tell me? Oh, to I you. bet you. I bet I you did. Okay. You came down here telling me. To, you telling me giving me orders in my house. You don't tell me what to do. I thought this was daddy house, oh, mama my, house. Oh, now oh, it's your oh, house. I thought you said it was mama house. You lying helpful. Ain't no what mama just said. Yes, ma'am. It's recorded. It's now you finally what? saying it's mama house. Uh -huh. Now you finally saying it. Do y'all see officer Now Sheena. you finally saying it. At first you said it wasn't mama house. Mama saying it's her house, but now no, it's your house. You Who house say, is it? You is it yours? It was never mama's house. Is it house. yours? Is it you yours or mama's? It was never mama house. What's she shaking for? You scared? No. You shaking? No. It's the demons in y'all. It's shaking me. No yes, it is. Demon. Oh, you okay. a fucking demon. Okay. You understand me? You are being recorded. I'm shaking it. How do you exist if you're not employed? How do you exist? Welcome back to Time Serve, the channel that scans the docket so you don't have to. I'm Phil, and today we have an update on this young whippersnapper. Do we remember him? If you want to seek counsel, I'll allow you to do that. And thirdly, sir, your next sentencing date is going to be in person. Okay. But, okay, yeah. Because I literally did nothing. nothing. I'm going to do it with the free lawyer and everything because... And they need to see the surveillance video. It happened in front of a fire station. Sir, you're done talking for the day. Yes, ma'am. In part two, we have Mr. Alfaro's in-court sentencing hearing, and the actual charges were not the issue. It's his competency. Mm, for what? She said that you didn't think that you actually pled guilty to this. Oh, was it? Were I'm aware of? No. But then let me know that I did it. I think it was you, but yeah, I my re, my memory I didn't, I didn't. But they said they did. They probably I I probably answered. I don't know, but I don't. Are you okay, sir? No, uh, yeah, I am. Are you okay, sir? <laughs> well, he's back and confusing us all once again. I have never seen such utter stupidity in all my life. His last appearances, we did not know the details. They came out slowly, but here we hear all of it. And finally, we get some closure on this case. Just breathe, Judge. Just breathe. Then we journey to the Lone Star State where we start in Jefferson County, where Judge Stevens yet again puts someone in cuffs. And there is actually an inmate that starts to yell at Judge Stevens. Ooh, wrong choice, dude. Then we go to Judge West where she catches a woman doctor shopping. And then we travel to Bexar County where Judge Rosie Speedling Gonzalez has a defendant in her courtroom treating the property as though it's his punching bag and she lets him have it. She loves the word admonish and she says it so eloquently. And speaking of eloquent, Judge Boy takes on a domestic abuse case. Then we travel back to Michigan where friend of the court, Judge Brian J. Nicholas, is dealing with a Karen who takes the word interruption to a whole nother level. I love hearing how you feel about these cases. Please leave a comment down below. And make sure you hit that like and subscribe and set your notifications to all and never miss the daily docket. Court is now in session. Let's roll, nerds. Arturo Vargas. Hello. You're not Arturo Vargas, right? Okay. No, sorry. All right. So I'm I'm doing the docket here, ma'am. Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. Vargas is not here. That's an FT. Did you know him? No, did you know him? He probably not. This is Mr. Atari. He, he was kind of acting weird. I just didn't know if you noticed that or not. It I think he's there. a different cell, Your Honor. They have oh, they have him a different they have cell? A different cell than, than okay, so uh, Fazel Sadek Atari. And, um, sir? Sufi? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. You're uh, from, uh, what is your country derivation? You're from? You're Persian? Uh, where is I? Uh, because the two questions. Where I born or where my, uh, what's my nationality? Family. Familiar. 
Where are you from? Where are you born? I born in the United Arab Emirates. Yes. Yeah. You know, my nationality is Jordanian. Jordanian? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, go ahead, John. Your Honor, we'd like to. John West is your lawyer. Yes, yes, we've spoken. So we'd like to this for trial document, Your Honor. I believe we're going to have an issue with, with the victim. Uh, at least I've been told that. Uh, but the other issue. What do you mean is the issue with the victim? I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been told by her. Okay, she's called an office and talked to me. Oh, yeah. So I don't know whether that happens or not. And when I talk to her, she says, I, I if I mean, ask her to come, she'll come. Right. And me and Mike know that. We talk with each other. We know that there's a discrepancy in what she's telling me versus what she's telling him. So we don't know. So we said, well, okay, look. Okay. And I would set a judge for a, a show up hearing where she would show up, but she moved away from here to get away from this gentleman. And so to do that, I'd have to make plane arrangements and have her fly here. All right. Well, I mean, if you want to, I'll, I'll try I, to do I, that. I would like to do that just to see what the plan is, right? How serious, because if it's not, then there's, yes, that's one direction, I guess. Yes, sir. Right. And then if it's otherwise, if we set this for trial by the time it gets around to trial, but the the uh, problem is let's see what it says here. Uh, I've get I've got some letters from uh, Mr. Atari, and The uh, you you wrote when you asked me if I had contacted my wife, I spoke the truth and told you I had, but I only communicated with my wife after the April tenth because you had a restriction of me communicating with her until April eighth of twenty twenty three, and that's not a fact. Uh, this as long as you're on bond. He's not he's on bond. He's in jail. But he was on bond. Was he? Has he no, always sir. been on jail? Oh, okay. He's been jail. Okay. 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 All right. Well, because the bond conditions are have no contact, but and he, I would have never released those conditions. He does need to know that that back in February we do have emails from him to his wife. Come, he's been contacting her before they. Yeah. So, but he, like I said, Your Honor, he was not on bonds. So it wasn't a bond condition. I know, but it's it's. Yeah. It, 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 it's us trying to think who would do that and uh, while you're in jail. That's why we have the bond conditions, but the bond conditions are well, if you're in jail, you can do more harm, I believe, by uh, communicating well, from the jail on people. And this court is always going to use the same. I expect people to follow the rules. This is the bond. Con these are the general bond conditions for everybody on bond, which include number eight, the defendant shall not communicate either directly or indirectly with the alleged complainant's victim of the pending offense. And I use, I expect the same behavior in jail. The thing is, is the difference is there are remedies available here right. on a bond condition. There aren't, aren't no, many no. remedies uh, I can do what am I going to do? Hold him in contempt and jail him for doubly. Yeah, right. You exactly. know? So I think that leads me to my next point. Your Honor. Uh, but you anybody right. attempting to contact the victim under this court's watch, I suppose, uh, and uh, I am just uh, inferring that that is an attempt to attempt to uh, to uh, influence the evidence in this case which uh, the evidence in this case is begins with a um standby uh, an affidavit and application for arrest warrant. Which is based upon the 
uh, statements of the complainant victim and I'm going to, uh, the court is going to protect uh, victims. And I guess maybe we ought to have a big old sign that says no one, no defendant who is in custody shall attempt to contact or have someone on their behalf contact. But uh, I don't think we need to. You try to do that, you attempt to do that, you'll be held. You don't you don't need my approval not to. That's I'm going to I'm going to uh, infer that that's only in an attempt to try to influence uh, the complaint. So you don't get points with me. I'll, I'll and I'm not going to drop. I've never dropped that rule ever. I don't know what this letter is talking about uh, until because you had a restriction until April 8th. It was a protective order out. I think it was another oh, okay. not, not not from you, from another oh, yeah. something else. Yeah. Uh, Your Honor, I, I do uh, one of the reasons I want to bring him out is that we would request a bond. He is a t his wife, the victim in this case, has tried to bond him out. She's uh, called me several times, worked to try to figure out a bondsman. Uh, nobody will bond him out or do a bond because she's the one paying for it. And she's the victim, so they won't do it. Uh, and she is the only person he has in the area or, or maybe even the country. Uh, they can do it for him. So we request a PR bond. If we did that, we could also have the restriction of not having any contact with the victim, which the court could do that at that point. I, I know. Uh, but uh, good that would be. Well, but, if you violate the state's would... contention is that's a different version that they receive it. Can we? And we can. Why don't we have set this in two weeks and I'll get her here. Set, we'll set it here in two weeks I'll get her here. and we'll listen to what she has to say. That works. That is all. Yeah. Talk to your lawyer. That is all. Your Honor, I, th I think he is a question that he hasn't been read to his indictment. I know we've waived it, but I don't think he understands that. Will you go ahead and read the open? You can re read it to him. Well, yeah. Well, I don't know. I think sure. Sure. Does he have a copy of it? Yeah. We, we Do you have a copy of the indictment? Yeah, I have, I have okay, you have a copy. Before I leave the door, what's the next system? What? The next step oh, the next uh, in this. Right. We're going to have a hearing in two, two weeks, weeks where yeah. the lady is going to be here and we're so going to hear have, from I her. Have, can I have a request? Sir? Can I have a request? Yes. I need to fire my attorney. Are you He's retained? Doing his job with me. Wait. Okay. Are you retained? Or, no, I'm appointed. Um, He's an appointed lawyer. You can hire anybody you want. Are you able to hire? You can hire anybody. The problem I am in the jail. I cannot. Uh, okay. Then, or, then you're entitled to a competent lawyer. Mr. West is a competent lawyer. Y'all just need to get together on if he, he's feeling like you're not attending to him enough. Fix that, please. You're competent. I know what you're capable of yes. doing and he is uh, he is appointed by the lady and I next door who know who the competent most competent lawyers are and those people are placed into the system to help people like you the I'm, fact that he's not seeing if he's not attending to you he needs to fix that yes, and cannot, that will I be a fix I cannot write the English letter I need to make complaint for the cap I cannot write that in, in the English Okay, and you, uh, what I understand from my wife, he, uh, you is denied my translator. Yeah, we were I cannot time. write that. He's saying he can't write the English language. what? He's saying he cannot write the English language. Okay, dictate to your attorney and he'll write it. He not visit me. He, he will me visit you. Five seconds. I ask him when my next. I'm sorry. Oh, I forget my. He will be ordered. He's ordered to visit with you and do right. his job competently. And and when we we'll see you in two weeks, if it hasn't changed, let me thank you. Thank you. All right. State of Michigan versus Melissa Ford Floyd, case number 22F61106. Great to meet Debbie for the people. Assistant Public Defender Davi Lebo for Miss Floyd. Miss Floyd, could you please state your name? Alisa Floyd. Good morning, Miss Floyd. Good morning, Miss Possible. How are you? I'm okay. All right, 
we are here today for a review and it looks like you're doing you've done everything you're supposed to do you keep testing positive for tac without a card but at this point the recommendation is for a discharge anything from the people uh, one moment miss floyd anything from the people your honor i just wanted to confirm um so I know that the last time we saw Ms. Floyd, that was on June 20th, I think she was asked to take a, she was at the test within 24 hours. I'm assuming that some, some, those positive TAC results include that test. I just want to make sure that all the bases yes. are covered. That was yeah. the only thing I tested for. That's the only thing I ever test for. I don't take psychotropic medications uh, for my depression, for my anxiety. My anxiety is out of this world. So like I have to do something. I don't drink anymore. I used to I used to run around here like a drunk skunk. Okay. Every day you at any given time you'd see me with a bottle in my hand. I don't take a drop. If I see a bottle of alcohol, I'm running. Because I know that if I take a drink, one little drink will get me off and running. Oh resort me back to this. And I don't want to come see Washington County no more. I'm straight. So the only thing I do, to, I don't take psychotropic medications because they cause me other problems. If it helps with my depression, it might make me feel crazy in some other way and I can't deal with it. I Thank don't you, take Seroquel for sleep. Most of the time, I get three or four hours sleep. Um, because of how bad my anxiety is. So I'm just, I'm very overwhelmed right now at this point. Uh, uh, I did one good thing on this August 6th. I did sign my new voucher, so new housing voucher. So now I can look for a place. But as everybody knows, that, that it's hard looking for a, a new apartment, a new place. Thank you, Ms. Floyd. So I'm dealing with that on top of trying to maintain my mental stability as well as trying to maintain a seven-year-old. Thank you, Ms. Floyd. All right. Anything from the defense, Mr. LeBeau? Uh, Your Honor, we ask that the court accept probation. The recommendation, I would note that it's very good that Ms. Floyd had succeeded in being abstinent from alcohol. Hmm. All right, Ms. Floyd, at this point, we're going to do a general discharge of you from the probation. You do need to make uh, payment plans um, for the rest of your fines and costs. Okay. All right. This car is killing me. This insurance is killing me. Uh, so are you not able to make any payments at this point? You need me to bring you back here? Should I just remain on a payment plan without the probation? Is that what you're saying? Yes, ma'am. It, it is. Okay. Yeah. Go to something. So do you do you have an amount that you know you can pay now or you want me to bring you back just so you can tell me what that is gonna be? Forty five a month to start with be okay. Yes, ma'am. What day do you think you can make that on? What day of the month? Uh, do it on the third. Do it on the third of the month. Okay, $45 per month on the third of each month, beginning in September. Okay, depending if I will, if I, of course, I'll pay more if I can to get it. I'm sorry, what did you say, Miss Floyd? I said, of course, I will definitely pay more if okay. I can. I'll put as much on as I can. All right. And then, so what I'll do is I'll see you back here on November 21st, 2023 at 10 a.m. If you're making your $40 per month, you don't have to show up. We'll just send you out a new date. But if you get your home, which I'm hoping you get, please uh, make sure you give us an updated address, okay? I sure will. Thank you. Have a good Thank day. you so much, Miss Washington. You've you've been so good to me. Oh, that's all I can say. You've been really good to me.
You my girl. You pretty awesome. Thank you. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Take care of yourself. You too. All right. Have bye-bye. a good day. You too. Bye. It's a huge, a fully tortured battery is a second or subsequent offense. Do you understand that charge, sir? No, sir, I don't understand what the second offense is. Would you explain? Well, he thinks that on January the 19th of 2021, you were convicted of felony battery by Judge Garcia, and that makes this a second or subsequent offense, causing it to be a higher offense, not a misdemeanor anymore. Now it's a felony. No, sir, under the 77505 or 01, the enhancement law cannot be enhanced again. That's a fact. No, it's, it's, you're being charged with a felony. Yes. yes. Your bond's 15000 No contact with the alleged victim. Your court date's going to be September the 4th at 9 o'clock. Good luck. Next. And they're not enhancing the second one, the first one again. They're enhancing the difference. Take your name, sir. Gabriel Colin Cheerberg. Mr. Chairman, before the court charge battery is a second or subsequent offense. I hope you've got better information than the gentleman before you. Well, the book. Right. I understand you've been given copies of paperwork and advised of your rights. Is that true? Yes, sir. I'm not, I'm not going to start any issues with you. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, Hi, Jim, Mr. Mr. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. You've indicated you're going to hire your own attorney or represent yourself. Is that how you're going to proceed? Yes, sir. Excellent. That's a good start. Stop. Deputy, criminal history? You got a DUI in 18 and some VOPs. Nothing new since. All right, I'm going to show you what's entitled Court Admonishments and Defendants Waivers and Affidavit of Admonitions. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand the state is proceeding on the lesser included offense of assault, bodily injury, marriage, or cohabitation as a class A misdemeanor? Yes, the range of punishment for that offense is up to one year in the Bear County Jail and up to a $4,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court doesn't follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes. Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? Yes. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, did you understand if the court were to grant your application for deferred adjudication, if for any reason your deferred adjudication were revoked, the court could find you guilty and sentence you up to one year in the Bear County Jail and up to a $4,000 fine? Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? He has, Your Honor. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? I believe that he does, Your Honor. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? I believe that he is and he was, Your Honor. Mr. Green, has anyone threatened you, forced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, ma'am. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, ma'am. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, ma'am. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial, showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the plea, the state is proceeding on the lesser included offense of assault, bodily injury, marriage, cohabitation. State recommends deferred adjudication. There's an affirmative finding of family violence. Did you understand with an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand with affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to be designated as primary custodial parent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, ma'am. Defense, is that the plea? That is, Your Honor. State, is that the plea? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes. Counsel, have there been any such motions? No, Mr. Judge, there have not. Next, I'm showing you outside the plea bargain agreement. The state is requesting that your deferred adjudication be for a term of two years. 
There be no contact with Jesse Willer, J E S S I E W H E E L E R, the B I P P program and anger management. Did you understand those were conditions that the state is recommending and the court does not have to follow that? Then to the less included offense of assault, bodily injury, marriage, cohabitation. How do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? State any evidence? The state offers state's exhibit one and all of its attachments. Defense is reviewed, Judge. We have no objection. And state, have you talked to the complainant? We have previously, Your Honor. Um, in complete candor, this, uh, the complaining witness has uh, signed an affidavit of non-prosecution um, and was uncooperative with our case. All right. Thank you. You may be excused. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Green, I'm showing you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes. Did you understand that today the state would be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses statements or police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one in attachments and review the same. All right. After reviewing states exhibits one in attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court will defer finding the guilt as you apply for deferred adjudication. Are we proceeding with sentencing? We are, Your Honor. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Yes, Judge. Uh, in regard to the uh, no contact order with Jesse Wheeler, um, the parties are cohabitating. They do share a five-year-old son who just started school yesterday. Um, my client works at Pepsi during the day. Mother works for Rack Space at night. Uh, so the uh, no contact order would impose a, a unduly burden uh, on the parties in re respect to parenting this child. Um, as is usually the case, Your Honor, in, in these situations, CPS uh, was involved uh, as per family-based service plan. Uh, the parties went to counseling. My client went to counseling and is continuing to go to counseling. Uh, both parties have been and are attending marriage counseling at this time. Uh, my client says that uh, it's, it's been a, a good influence on both them and their relationship. And they feel that the no contact order, if implemented, uh, as mentioned, would be a burden not only on their relationship, on their uh, status, but their uh, ability to uh, parent these, the five-year-old child. So we respectfully request that the court not order a no contact order. Thank you. All right. So is this a son or a daughter? Because I was reading the report, it was a daughter. A little girl. Sorry. Okay, daughter. no problem. I want to make sure I have it right. So what family members do you have in Bear County? I have my mom and my dad, but my dad, he doesn't really help out much. My mom, she really can't because she can barely move around herself. Oh, I'm sorry. My dad, he doesn't really help. And my mom, she can't because she physically, physically can't move around to help watch my five-year-old. All right. So here's the thing. I'm not going to do uh, a no harm for injurious contact. If there wants to be a no contact order, then... The complainant can appear by Zoom or either in person. I want you to understand something. Yes, ma'am. I read the police report, and in the police report, you said she was Protect pushing your buttons. You're pushing her buttons, and all, you can unfold your arms. And all of you all were acting not as adults. Y'all were acting like children. And the child at the time was four years old. You all cause drama and trauma to a four-year-old. What is a four-year-old supposed to think? And you and the complainant are going through the apartment, throwing things around. And you tell a four-year-old, don't throw that, place it back where, where it's supposed to be and trying to lay down the law to a four-year-old. And you all are work, acting worse than the four-year-old. Yes, and that's a memory that that four-year-old is going to have forever. No Thank amount you. of counseling that you all go to to try to put your life together is going to take away that the four-year-old witness all of this drama in their life. So if he wants to have contact with the mom and they're working things out, she needs to appear by Zoom and the court will consider it. If you want to get her to Zoom in here today, then I'll consider it today. Is she able to Zoom today? She's asleep because she works at night. Oh, well, if somebody wants to call her and have her Zoom in. I can call her. All right. So it's going to be two years deferred adjudication, affirmative finding of family violence, no contact with Jesse Willer. 
a course. If you call and she zooms in today, I'll reconsider. The BIPP course, 80 hours community service restitution. I'm going to order parenting classes. If you've done parenting classes through CPS, that will be acceptable. If you have not, then you'll need to do parenting classes. If he's completed parenting classes related to this incident through CPS, then the community service okay, hours will be so de deemed to be satisfied. There's to be anger management. There's to be CPS compliance. It sounds like it's a, it's a safety plan. So whatever the safety plan is giving them, just make sure he's doing that. And probation, if what he's doing for his CPS safety plans coincides with what I'm requesting, then the CPS, what they're doing will be enough. There's going to be regular reporting by Zoom or in person, regular UAs, and field visits one time. Well, field visits, I want at least three field visits throughout the entirety of his probation. So you only have to do three. If you deem that there's something that's an issue, then of course you can do more, but a total of three field visits throughout his probation. There's to be proof of employment within 30 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. Probation, is there anything else you need? Ed, your bond was $5,000. It is doubled to $10,000. You must have a drug patch as a condition of bond. And did you, uh, you have a lawyer? I was going to give him mine. Yeah, yeah. Um, you need to fill out one of those indigent forms. Uh, and then I can appoint somebody to represent you. Because uh, you were not represented. Huh? I have a brief moment to speak with Go ahead. I'm just trying to make them an excuse. But right now, I'm not going to afford just to get matter with my son. I'm sorry about that. You shouldn't be showing up in while on bond or at any time using drugs and handling pro problems like that. Any kind of problems irresponsibly using illegal drugs is a poor way to do it. But we have rules and we're going to follow the rules. Yes, and I'm not letting you amble out of here into the roadway when you're high on drugs. And then you either if you're driving, you hit somebody or you walk in front of somebody and they hit you. But the fact of the matter is when you're on my bond. Yes, I'm going to be accountable if something you do something bad on my watch irresponsibly. Yes, you have to follow the rules. And that's what I'm doing is treating you like everybody else. When you flunk a drug test, your bond is revoked. It gets doubled. And you have to have a drug patch as a condition of bond. If you have family issues, I, uh, this is the way I do it. My family comes first, not my drugs. Yes. So I don't have sympathy with anyone like that. Mm -hmm. All you're doing is you what getting high is more important than than your family, but you like to use your family when you're in a crack like that. Oh, now all of a sudden your family's important. It wasn't hard for me to look into the eyes of my children or my wife when I was about to make a decision that would be the right decision or the wrong decision. Mm -hmm. Because I could see how much I could lose. With what, with what I care about. You, on the other hand, and many like you who come here, unfortunately, care more about drug usage. Yeah. Yes. But that costs you. Your family shouldn't be second and third. They should be number one. Yes. You should be way down the list. Yes. Taking care of your drug needs shouldn't be number one. And when that happens, you lose, you sacrifice. And you lose wonderful things. And the family suffers because they rely on you as the role model, as the leader of the family, you're, which you're not doing properly. That's my lecture. That is all. Go on. Okay. This Tiara Norman was reset. George Cons shouldn't happen in the first place. That's the problem. You know, that we they shouldn't be up here and having to deal with that somebody somebody's making a mistake one side or the other to get up here 
23-415-89 is called the state of Texas versus Evan DeRuin. That's you, sir, right? I remember uh, you. What's on your face? What is that, Louisiana? Uh, no, sir, just some different. It looks like almost the state of Louisiana. Do you work somewhere? Uh, no, sir. Do you, do you, are you surprised no, that sir. you're finding a hard time having a job? I mean, you know, people, you're not going to be put in positions of dealing with folks when you, your face is all marked up. Don't you realize that closes doors of opportunities, right? I mean, you're not answering, right? Doesn't it? Yes. Or you don't really care about work. How do you exist if you're not employed? How do you exist? Do you have, are you independently wealthy? I'm curious. You can speak to me. Or we can revisit your bond. How do you how do you exist? You can sit over there. We'll wait on you to make a decision. Buddy, you uh, these are required answers since you're on bond. The court can ask that, but you want to be quiet. No, you're in timeout. You want to be quiet. We'll all wait for you, buddy. Why don't you come back at one o'clock? Yeah. Okay. Can you come back at one? Well, look, can I talk to him for a minute? Uh, I don't know. I don't think he understands English the way he's acting. It's like he's confused about the whole thing. This, Mr. Wilkerson, come yeah. on up. Maybe you've got a client that can speak English. Judge. Kane Velasco. Mr. DeRuin, come on up. And you are also clear on your test, which is a good thing. Mr. Reynolds is your attorney. Yes. All right. Um, there was a communication problem here. And so you know what you've been charged with, third-degree felony, deadly conduct, and setting it for trial? Uh, uh, Sonny Eckert had the case. I think there's a note in his file that they were going to contact the complaining witness. As okay. To why don't we resolution review? We just reset it. Why don't we days. review it for four weeks and see um, if that's going to happen? But who is? I believe it's his parent. Who is this? The person who is the victim? Father. father? Yes. Is that right? Yes. You can speak. Okay. okay. Fixing this mess. Yes, sir. Yes. Honor thy father and thy mother, right? That's a commandment, isn't it? Uh, you, I agree with that. Yes. Okay. All right, get a resetting. Thank you. Thank you. Here's some things. Okay. Uh, William Eckert? Yes, Judge. Sorry. All right, you are Jasmine Johnson, and Ms. Johnson, you're here because you're on probation for the offense of retaliation. Um, put on probation. Let's see. Do you see December of 2021? And part of that probation was that you go through the JCDI program, which you did. Um, I've got a memorandum that was sent over um, by your probation officer uh, regarding some issues, and it looks like there's been kind of an ongoing issue with uh, use of Xanax or benzo benzodiazepine. It looks like you finally got kind of in a good place on that and not using that um, while you were in JCDI, but then you were transferred on to kind of the aftercare type uh, part of that. And in June, tested positive. We're told that you can't use it again because it's narcotic and that you reported to your group um, under the influence, left early. You weren't allowed to sign in because of that. You requested an alternative to ATAR, which your probation officer allowed you to do. Uh, to go to some individual counseling sessions with Ms. Wilson and um, 
were requested to uh, sign in for the drop program and it looks like uh, you did that, but that you have been very unhappy and uh, not very, I guess, uh, respectful about that issue with regard to your probation officer and that you asked to come and talk to me about me letting you use Xanax. Is that right? No, it's, it's, it's just my prescription. It's something that I was getting before I came here in your program. And it's something that I've been taking for years. Mm -hmm. it's, it's my medication. I just asked him. I don't get why I can't take something that's mine. It's, it's, my, it's got my name on it. It's kind of dumb. Well, here's the problem. If there was an issue, obviously, when you were sentenced that came up about substance use and abuse, right? And so that's why the other was, because I, I wouldn't have made you go through the JCDI program otherwise. So something in your pre-sentence report and that substance abuse evaluation pointed to some type of overuse, misuse, or something of that and or other medication. I don't have it right now. I don't remember, obviously that was several years ago. Here's the thing. There are alternatives to that if that is an issue. And what I'm not going to allow is you to continue using that uh, without some further information or documentation from your doctor. So here's where we're gonna be on this. Um, you're going to, who's your doctor? Who prescribes that medicine? Well, I was going to um, Weissman. I haven't been in a minute, but I, I made, made me get the assessment. I got that made and gave me other different types of medication. Okay. Half of those don't work. They do other side effects. I don't like it. I didn't get on different stuff. Since, since Who prescribed the medicine? Some came from Spelletown and some came from Weissman. Who prescribed the Xanax that you're taking right know, now? Dr. App, I can't say his name. I don't know how to pronounce it. Dr. Um, I don't know how to say his name. I know they have one doctor named April right now. And I don't know how to say the other name. So you don't have a regular doctor that you're going to see? Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. I see that. Thank you. So through, can I get, here's what I want. I want a doctor that I guess we have confidence and trust that has seen Ms. Johnson to give me some information about whether or not they and believe we that that last specific prescription is necessary. I don't know if we can do that through spinal top and ATAR. Did she have an evaluation there? Um, um, from the beginning, right? Yeah, I don't remember when. But have yeah. you been going? Did, did you have any? No, I went recently, but that was it. And then I went to get the assessment you told me to get. And they just was telling me they have to see the doctor and he'll prescribe me something. Okay. And that was about it. Well, this is, that's what's going to happen. For right now, you're not taking it. If you test positive for it, it's a violation of your court order and your probation, and you're going to go to jail. It's that simple. Okay. Um, if, and so you need to call Spinal Top, you need to make that appointment to go see that doctor, explain to them what's going on, and that you feel, you know, whatever it is that they prescribe, if it's that, they will do some type of documentation for me that says this is necessary. You're not going to go get prescriptions from a doctor at Riceland or a doctor here or this doctor or that doctor, because what that shows me is that you're going and just trying to find somebody to get it for you, which is a sign of a drug problem. Okay. So you're going to go to one doctor. It's going to be someone that you're also getting some counseling from. It's necessary through a spinal top. You talk to your probation officer about that. And I'll reset the case for a review maybe in 30 days. Should give you time to hopefully do that. Stay in touch with probation. You're going to be tested between now and then um, as much as they think is necessary. And you cannot have that in your system. Do you understand? you have any questions about what, what we're doing right now? 
Okay. Anything else uh, from probation that would um, help or anything? No, ma'am. I did talk to the officer this morning. Uh huh. And she wanted a movement done, but since we're waiting on the doctor, let's doctor do that. Report, yeah. Just wait on that. Yep. I want to see from that first what the uh, what they say, and then we'll know kind of if it is something for her <laughs> mental health that she needs and there's no other alternatives, then we'll see about it. But it's going to come, if that's the case, it's going to come from one doctor, one prescription, and we're going to have somebody watching over that. If it's not, then they're going to give you something else um, and we'll go from there. Okay, you're free to go. Wait, <clears throat> Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. And your assistant public defender, Chinazi Kiriak, and really on behalf of Mr. Andrew Alfaro Calais. Mr. Alfaro Calais, could you please unmute and state your name for the record, please? Uh, Andrew Alfaro. And I stated that I didn't need a state attorney. Is that still valid? You stated what, sir? Uh, I let her know that I didn't need a, an attorney, a defensive attorney. That was sir, sir. Yes, you are clear. I am the only one that decides whether or not an attorney will be on a case or not. You don't get to decide that until I've made a finding that you are competent to do so. Okay. Do you understand, so? Yes, I understand. All right. So, um, first of all, we're back here for sentencing. saying there were two things, three things that I wanted to happen before we uh, continue. One was... Um, I indicated that if there was a motion that was going to be filed to withdraw his plea, that needed to be filed uh, prior to today's date. I don't see any such motion in my file. Am I missing anything? The people aren't aware of any motion, uh, either Your Honor. Your Honor, you are not missing anything. We did not file a motion. We have not been able to make or have substantial uh, communication with Mr. Alfaro Calais. I was able to meet with him today in the courthouse. Um, and he was not interested in speaking with me in regards to the case. He just renewed his request stating that he did not want um, my office or any attorney representing him. Um, so I, I guess I wanted to know from the court how the court would like for us to proceed. If he's made those uh, statements, I didn't know if it was proper for us to still continue um, filing motions or making any uh, requests on his behalf. Well, before that type of request can even be entertained, the next question, which is what I was getting to next, Sorry. was that I said that if there was any referral for competency, that needs to happen before today's court date as well. So have you made a determination as to whether or not you believe that Mr. Uh, Aferro Calejas is competent? Judge, from my, I, I, I do think that he is um, competent. He states that he, when, when, when speaking with him, he understands what is going on in the case. Um, there, I, I was hopeful that I would be able to communicate or contact a, a family member, his mother specifically, but that was unsuccessful. There are some language barriers there um, in regards to speaking with his mother. His um, aunt usually comes to court with him, but he understands what is going on in the case. I was not the attorney who uh, represented him when he entered the plea initially. Um, he maintains or has a particular defense that he wants to assert to the court. Um, so I for competency, um, competency we're purposes, I, I do think that he would be found competent if the court. All right. All right. I think he's competent, Judge. All right. Thank you. Having said that, Mr. and your attorney finding that you're confident, who's in the best position to make that decision, Mr. Alfaro Calejas, I understand that you're renewing your request to uh, have this, uh, have no representation by counsel. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. So Sir, you fully understand that this is a misdemeanor carrying a maximum penalty of up to 90 days in the Washtenaw County Jail. And that if you don't have counsel, then you, if counsel is allowed to withdraw from this case based on a breakdown in the attorney relationship or based on your request to do so, and you're allowed to represent yourself, you can still get up to 90 days in a Washtenaw County jail. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. Right. And do you understand that it is not advisable under any circumstances to represent yourself in court without counsel? Do you understand that? Yes, I understand. 
and over uh, the advice of the court that that is not wise, you mm -hmm. still want to represent yourself and why? I feel more comfortable representing myself. I just feel more comfortable uh, defending myself because all I, all I have is the truth. So that's why I'm comfortable. That's all, that's all anybody has, sir. You know you, you're not unique in, under, in that situation. What will be unique is that you're representing yourself, which many people choose not to do because they know it's not wise. But you're going to make that decision anyway. As long as I've informed you of the maximum penalties, which is 90 days in jail, and you fully understand that, if you choose to do that by yourself, then I'm going to allow it, but I'm going to appoint the PD as uh, standby counsel. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. All right. We're here for sentencing today, sir. What would you like to say prior to sentencing? Um, I'm innocent. You've already pled guilty. Oh. What? Well, okay. Then, no, I have no sentence. I mean, um, no, Your Honor. No way. This is I, why you shouldn't represent I, yourself, because I, you don't even understand the process. I just said, oh, I'm sorry. I said, no, Your Honor. I have no statement. Ms. McDuffie? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, so I am in receipt of the pre-sentence investigation report. I believe this one is uh, from his original sentencing date, um, which was June 20th. I don't think there have been any changes to it since that time. Um, I don't, um, Mr. Alfaro Calejas, um, well, I'm not going to address any of his previous representations because at this point he's representing himself. So we have essentially crossed that bridge. I do go want to point out that at one point, and I believe that was on June 20th, he believed that he was 17 years old when this offense occurred. Um, but I believe based on the information that we have and the fact that this offense occurred last year, that he would have been uh, 20, either 20 or 21 years old when it occurred. So um, that being the case, I agree with the recommendation and I would ask the probation to, um, I would ask the court to adopt it, except that what we've seen in the past two uh, adjourned sentencings, I think, increases the concern. So if the court finds it appropriate to um, adjust the length of that probation and supervision and add any additional terms that people will certainly have no objection to that either. Okay. Mr. Alfaro Kulihas, do you understand what's going on, sir? Yes, I do. And... And I actually, I accept it. I, I feel guilty. I don't, I, it's just, that's how I feel I have to do it. Even though I don't feel I'm guilty, or I, even though I know I'm not guilty, but it's just, this is the easiest thing to do at this point. But this is the case of the police that officer that hit me, right? So you pled guilty to this charge back on June 20, I'm sorry, actually January 26 of 2023. You, you pled guilty back then. You pled guilty eight months ago. Yes, sir. So I'm really confused as to why you think once you pled guilty, you don't just start over. You've already pled guilty. You're here for sentencing. Do you understand that part? Yes, sir. Uh, Miss uh, Akiri, I can really. Sorry. Judge, sorry. I was trying to see if I could grab a copy of the, um, I've gone over the report before with him, um, but I just wanted to hand him a copy out in the hallway. Does he have a copy of the police report? He wouldn't have it right now, um, I, I assume, but I, I, I can't confirm whether or not he's ever received a physical copy of it, Judge. I'll print, I'm printing that now as well. Thank you.
So, Mr. Um, Alfaro, we have the allegation is, and well, the truth is, that you turned left in front of a Washington County Sheriff deputy in his work vehicle, and then you left the scene. In his work vehicle, you said? Yes, yes. you turned in front of a police car. Sorry, did you say his personal car or his working car? His working car. Yes, his working car. Yeah, he hit me. And, and then I, you left the scene. You turned in front of him. You got hit. And then you left. I was very shocked. I didn't know it was the officer. He had do, you no understand, do you understand that leaving the scene is the crime? Yes, sir. I was. I went to my house, to my mom's house. It was three minutes away because I was very shocked because a random car just hit me. So it wasn't a random car. You turned in I, front of the car. I didn't turn in front of it. My back of my car got hit. Like the back rear end of near the lights. That is you turning in front of a car. It doesn't matter where you got hit. He knows the red light. Mm. Is it relevant who was at fault? Oh, yeah. You left I'm, the scene. I'm, yes, yes, ma'am. I did. I, I left the scene. But in my head, I was shocked. It doesn't yeah. matter what's in your Understood. head. Understood. It's a crime. Yes. Yes. Then, yes. And that, how you just said it? Yes, I left the scene. I don't, I don't even understand why you're doing all of this when you were the one who left the scene. I, I don't I don't understand this. That's why I question whether you're competent or not. Yes. Yeah. Ms. Ikeria, is she taking the police report down now? Mm -hmm. No. So we're hoping that the attorney's going to bring you a copy of the police report, which you can review after this. But at this point, I'm going to move forward with sentencing. Is there anything else you would like to say? No, thank you. There's a sentence of this court that you served 90 days in the Washtenaw County Jail credit uh, for none. The balance is suspended, meaning that if you um, do what you're supposed to do while you're on probation, then you don't have to do any additional jail time. Do you understand that? Yes, Sean. You're on probation for six months. Fines and court costs in this case for $525. You owe restitution in an amount of $6,381.65, which I'm qu I'm qu curious about. Um, did they not have insurance? Mom? I'm not, I'm not talking to you, Mr. Uh, Alfaro Calias. Ms. McDuffie. Your Honor, I'm going to defer to Ms. Straub on that because I think that uh, she has an invoice um, that actually came directly from the sheriff's department. Your Honor, if I could just have one moment, I'm pulling it up. It's um, I have it right from here. Mr. Heaton. Okay. But I, but I, it doesn't answer the question. about whether or not they had insurance. This is just an invoice for how much it would cost to do the repairs. It doesn't say whether insurance covered any of this. So I, I, I'm not going to order that right now. I want, uh, I'm going to leave it open for 30 days. We need to check into whether or not they had insurance and whether there's just a, a deductible that needs to be paid. Will be, um, Your Honor, and I, I am looking at the notes. I don't actually have that physical. I think that was part of the interview, but I am looking at notes that report that the deputy that was hit um, was um, uh, evaluated for some injuries as well. So I'm not sure if that invoice relates to any physical issues versus no. the vehicle. It doesn't. Okay, this is just on. labor and body frame and a service fee and the processing fee for the work on the vehicle. So if there was insurance, that should have covered that. Okay. Mom, I had insurance. That was her yes. car. Sir, this is not about your insurance. This is about their insurance. Oh, okay. Thirty dollars per month probation oversight fee. So you need to do um, 
five five days of community service. Me with probation when and we're directed Taking to of an automobile and two visits. years. And that'd be you need to complete the class A uh, training center level one decision based uh, driving class. And you you need to start that class within the next um, 10 days because I don't think you fully understand how driving works. So you need, I'm not sure that's the only class you need. So I'm going to start with that, but you definitely need to take that class. Okay, Anna. All right, you need to call probation. Yes. Can I get a number for that, please? Call number, yes, 734. Hold on, give up that. Or you getting a pen you, or you got a pen? That is your report too, sir. All right. 734 483 7336. 7336, right? Yes. All right. And then you have these other two tickets one for driving while license suspended and one for an unregistered uh, vehicle. Your licenses are still suspended, so you shouldn't even be driving right now. Yes. Are you going to try to get your license? What are you going to do? I'm currently unemployed, so... But after this court thing, then yeah, when I get my job. But not right now. All right. Do you want me to go get it? I can go get it. Yeah, you should probably get your license. Otherwise... You got to figure out what you're going to do with these driving while license suspended tickets that you want to represent yourself on. Or do you want counsel again? Because you don't know what you're doing. Counsel. Yeah, I probably will get counsel. Be more informed about it. I'm sorry, what? Uh, yes, I'll. Yes, I will get lawyers when I go to court. It's the best thing to do. Or uh, oh. uh, what's that called? Con public counsel. Defender? Yeah, public defender. Okay. So the PD, was the PD appointed on this case? So PD, you're still on 23W000024. Understood, Judge. And the unregistered as well. So you're both on, you're on both of those. Can you please help him? He only has, he only has one suspension that keeps him from having his license right now. I'm not sure if this new case is going to affect that, but that is the um, from 2021 out of 1482. He has a no proof of insurance ticket that he needs to take care of out in Judge uh, Byers Court. If he takes care of that failure to appear, failure to, to uh, complete his judgment then he can get his license. Okay. So he just needs to call 14A2 and get his license. Your Do, Honor, I'm so yeah. sorry. Is that, that 14A2 case, does that end with 443? No. Okay. It ends with 6660. Do you have a different one? No, I, that, his brother has one. So I was uh, so I just wanted to make sure we had, had them straight. Okay. So what is your request on these tickets, Ms. Ikeria? Your honor, please. Okay. I bring him back on October 3rd, see if he has taken care of those, of that ticket at least, okay? Okay. 11 a.m. again. He needs hand-holding and uh, that's the time I have to, to do hand-holding. I understand. Okay. Uh, all right, we're going to put you in with Mr. Works right now, Mr. Alfaro Kaliha, so you can talk to him about making sure he has a way to reach you, okay? Okay. All right, thank you, sir. If anyone wants to reach me, no, 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 no. Talk, no talk. <laughs> substantiated claim that was recently made on June 30th. 
an unsubstantiated claim on March 22nd, 2023, an unsubstantiated claim on January 20, 2022. Um, and to be quite frank, they were all primarily the same allegations, ma'am, that his house or him and his fiance are abusive. And that's the primary allegation you're making. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Am I okay. concerned for my three-year-old constantly getting out of their house and nearly hit by a car? Well, how do you know she was almost hit by a car? Um, that was what a statement was made in front of my daughter, Liliana. And the neighbors apparently made that statement too. Okay. There was a woman who grabbed her and called nine one one. I wasn't there for it. Okay. I wasn't okay. there. And how 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 long ago was that? Is this one of those a year or two ago? One of no, those no, no. reports this from a couple years back. ago? No, this is this is where it all started. Liliana, on her one of her last visits with me in early June, told me of an incident of Lucy getting out of the house and almost getting hit by a smart bus, but there was a lady who grabbed her just in time and she was crying about it. She called 911. CPS was notified about it because when the police went into the home, um, the person, the child that was supposed to be watching the younger children was on the second floor sleeping. Mm -hmm. And um, I called CPS myself because um, they continue to give me information on, on, on them being left out. Uh, the, the fiance has left my three-year-old home mm -hmm. alone in a bed while she takes the other kids to school. And Lily said to mm -hmm. me or said to her, what happens if something happens to Lucy? And then her response was, well, that'll be a sad, sad day, but we can make another okay. one. <laughs> okay. So, but, so just so you know, the CPS evaluations, these, these, they quote, some of the uh, almost everything you're saying, but they denied all of your investigative requests. You do understand that, correct? Protective services denied these as substantiation of abuse. I understand, but then why why are the police being called so many times? Why is the neighbor saying that okay, my three year old so gets out? Just, just times? okay. I'm listening. Well, I'm I don't listening. know. Do you is that per, is that person here to testify today? No, but it's in the police report, and I don't know his okay, name. Okay, so it's stop. Protected. Stop, stop. So let me ask this. What did Dr. Beckley tell you his recommendation was? Because he spoke to me right before this afternoon's hearings and told me, did he tell you what his thoughts were about the parenting time before you left or no? He didn't share that with you. He didn't share that with me. He said, she did good. You guys are good to go. Those were the words he said. Yeah. So just so you know, and you can call Dr. Beckley if you take issue with it. So Dr. Beckley told me that he has no care for her care uh, by her father and that there should be low, no limits to his parenting time. That's what Dr. Beckley's assessment was after talking to you and talking to your daughter. You didn't Is that a surprise to you? Not really. It didn't give me a chance to speak. Um, I was wondering if you got any of the letters that I mailed into you um, to your direct email. I sent multiple things for you to look over. So what you I see police reports. What are these police reports supposed there's to tell me? Police reports. There's uh, sheets of my uh, meetings that I go to. There's letters from Lily's therapist who suggest that Mr. Barrett and Ms. Benjamin go to a parenting class for discipline. Has has your ther has her therapist ever met Mr. Barrett or his fiance? No. And what's the name of the therapist? Her name is Cynthia Miller. Mr. Baird, are you aware of Miss Miller? Absolutely not, Your Honor. I was actually unaware that my child was even in therapy over there. Never spoken to of me. Done all just on her own. I had no, um, I, I had no uh, idea of it until till this court, or actually till last week when it was brought up. She had mentioned something about therapy for. Uh, Liliana, so I was unaware of the whole situation until, until this. Uh, so, ma'am, when did your daughter start? Okay, when did your daughter start going to therapy? I got her as soon as I could after I called Child Protective Services because um, she was she's lashing out. She um, doesn't have control of her emotions. She feels like at home she can't speak her mind or say how she feels, or else she'll be hit. Um, she, you know, she wanted to write you a letter herself, but I told her no. How 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 old is your daughter? She's nine. A year, a nine-year-old asked to write a letter to the court. She did. She wanted to write a letter to the judge stating that she does not want to live with her father. And I said, "You can tell the therapist that if that's what comes up." A, a nine-year-old said that. Yes, sir. 
How does she know that you guys are in court? Because uh, I I don't know if you know about the way we speak. We speak through a parenting app, and it's not very um, co-parent friendly. He has never been co-parent friendly. I sent you messages but, but, on but, there. Okay, so how does that how does that get you to your daughter knowing? That? Letters and sent you text messages. Okay, stop. So one, so one, you guys cannot have ex party communication with the court. You can talk to the court during a hearing, me or the judge, during a hearing. If you want to submit evidence, you have to submit it during the course of a hearing and provide the other side with a copy. So if I you send me a bunch of letters, email. stop, stop. You're not listening to me. You cannot send secret letters to the court uh, arguing your case by correspondence to the court. I will not read them. What I will do is refer, uh, send them to the custody investigator, but I don't read secret letters from either one of you. You can submit photos, legal documents under the rules of evidence, but you can't secretly send pages and pages of dialogue to the court to read secretly when the other party's not in court. Court is about both of you being in front of the court, being aware of what the other party's saying. You can't have what's called ex party communication. You can't send secret letters to the judge, to the referee, because my staff reviews my mail and they're specifically told if there's an issue in a letter or something that can procedurally be someone can be talked to about that's fine we can't give legal advice but they go through my email to make sure that i don't have ex party communication and i don't i don't read pages of letters so if you sent them they've been removed by my staff knowing that i don't have ex party communication and if it's not a piece of evidence that you're going to enter here today and give him a copy then i don't review it it's ex party and i don't review letters from the parties arguing your case I this is the time to argue it I emailed him every piece of document that I sent to your that email that you I asked so, you all. So let me ask this. So let me ask this. Why do you think if he in his his these are primary allegations against his fiance? Why do you think if she's abusing your child, child protective services after numerous um, complaints has not found that to be the case? And I'm not trying to be mean here. I'm just asking very blunt questions because, guys, this court relies on independent third bodies to help the court decide who's telling the truth, who's being accurate, and help the court make a decision. Child Protective Services is the agency in Michigan that you call who can immediately go in, intervene, remove children from a home, take action, refer it to the juvenile court. And there's a disconnect between what you're alleging because I see complaints in here uh, going back two years, all reiterating the same thing you're telling now. And over the last two years, Child Protective Services has not substantiated any of this as being true. So there's a disconnect. Are you there, ma'am? Okay, we lost her. Hopefully she'll be back in a minute. So Mr. Barrett, when's the last time you've talked to CPS? Recently? Um, last time at home. I don't remember the exact date, to be honest. Um, just a lot of in the last was, month in the last in the last month. Yeah, I believe it was. It was. It was okay. that Mrs. Natalie. I don't know if you or not. It was that Mrs. Natalie uh, uh, Burt Betchel. I think her name. Her name is. How yeah, you say I don't. That? I don't know all the CPS guys. Yeah. I'm the court, but I don't know CPS workers. No, Sorry. I know you. I don't know their names. I don't know. Maybe if you had her name, that would help you out. But I, I, that's her name. I have. I don't remember the exact date, Your Honor, but it was the most recent. Uh, visit when they come to the home. Of so, so how did that go? Was that, is that regards to your wife and abuse by your fiance or not yeah. your wife, your fiance? That we're before the court now for your honor. Yes. And, and uh, they come in and frankly, um, they were just appalled and they immediately closed the case. Like I said, Mrs. Natalie well, looked at Why me. do you, do, let me ask this. Do you think she's making this up or do you think your daughter's telling her mom these things? Cause sometimes the point is, Oh, she, yep. Yeah. One second. No problem. You want me to let her? Yeah. All right. So just take a pause. No problem. Man. All right. So, ma'am, are you back? My, I apologize. My phone over here. That's okay. That's sir. It's a, I just want to say that I've okay. never done this before. I don't know where I'm supposed to mail that stuff, but that stuff has evidence of him um, being having infidelity, being disgusting, nasty text messages to me, and filthy language when he talks to me, even on the parenting app. And I didn't know where to send it. I I asked you for your I, email. So where is that? Because I'm looking. I'm looking at emails, but I'm not. You sent a whole. I, but what what do you want me to look at? 
I know there's a lot to look at, but there's letters there. The most important one is the one that I wanted you to read was about me and the reason why I kept my children from him at his home. And what? then there's plenty well, what, in there well, of him tell, being. Well, tell me what that tell me what that letter is going to tell me. This is your time to argue your case. I can read it to you, actually, if you'd like. OK, I'll go for it. Go ahead. So um, and. And why? Okay, I'll listen to that, and then we'll have a couple more, a little more dialogue. Go ahead. Um. Yeah, because I've sent all. There's a lot of stuff where I see a bunch of nasty. stuff, but but, ma'am, you, ma'am, unless you sent him a copy of all this stuff, I you did. can't it's just all, send the court a bunch of stuff that, to look at. They're forwarded in him. I have no way to contact this man. I don't have his phone number. All I have is app close in his email. I sent it all through his email. I forwarded everything that I sent to you to his email. Okay, so what? Read what you got to read. Go ahead. I'm I'm gonna, I'm pulling it up. My phone is overheated, so I'm trying to find it. Just give me two shakes. Just waiting for it to load. I apologize. My phone's very so, old. So tell me, so let me ask this. You sent, you sent ten, like lots and lots of, you said numerous pages of text and other stuff. What is the okay. worst thing in one of these texts that I'll find? What's the worst? Tell me the worst of what he said to you. Um, You'll find that uh, they sprayed water into my three-year-old's face until she stopped screaming, like waterboarded her. Um. They, he said that he did. He tells you that he's never text. told that. Why would he admit that he hit the paddle? Ma'am, the, the DHS ma'am, lady. you ma'am, ma'am, you said that's not the question I asked. You said that in these texts, he talks to you in a horrible manner. No, what is the I, worst I, in these texts? What, what I was going to read you the letter that I wrote for why I kept. OK, my let's explain. OK, everything. let's let let's do the letter and then we'll get back to my question. Go ahead. Says, dear your honor. I'm writing to you today to explain why I've violated my custody agreement, custody agreement for Liliana Ray and Lucy Barrett. It started out with my daughter Liliana informing me my three-year-old daughter Lucy got out of their father's home on several occasions, and one one with within five days of each other. I've heard about it two months after the incident happened. He never told me about it. I had to learn about it through my nine-year-old daughter. Lucy, got, um, she was wandering Mount Clemens and she nearly got hit by a bus. Some stranger stopped and called the police and reported it to the police reported it to CPS. I attached the police reports that I could get where the officer explained that the 15 year old son, Alex, of Miss Benjamin's was was to be watching the younger children, but was asleep, found asleep on the second level of the floor or of the house. The report also has neighbors stating that this was not the first occasion that Lucy has gotten out of the house unattended with no adult around. Liliana told me on several occasions that it was just uh, it was just been the younger children, the oldest one being 11 years old by themselves for hours where Mr. Barrett and Miss Benjamin worked long days. And a year ago, Austin, the 11 year old who was he stuck his penis through a hole in his pants and dared Lily to touch it. And instead of correcting her son, who is older and should know better than to try to do that with a younger child, they grounded Liliana to her room. It doesn't surprise me, as Mr. Barrett has allegedly been touchy-feely with my younger under the age sisters at the time. There was no evidence of that so that nothing happened to Mr. Barrett. My children have experienced physical, mental, verbal, and emotional abuse. For example, I've gone and gone to take something away from Lucy and reached out for a hug and they both flinch like they're going to be hit. Liliana told me that one time her, uh, her father flat out told me that uh, they have a wooden paddle and it has been used by both Brent Barrett and Miss Shauna Benjamin to spank her with it. This is called, this is when I called CPS. Miss Natalie was assigned to the case and I told her of my concerns which were also written in the motion that I had just delivered to Brent days prior. Miss Natalie told me that she could not 
or she had tried to contact Mr. Bear, but on numerous occasions, but he did not answer or he was not home, giving him ample time to fix the concerns that I also, that I had written in my motion. I also was told by Miss Natalie that um, the paddle was coincidentally nowhere to be found, that they didn't have one. Well, he admitted to you in court that he did have one and he, and he um, threatens with it. Liliana has been on three, um, been to three sessions with her counselor, Miss Cynthia Miller. She's a mandated reporter and she asked me if I had reported this to CPS. I told her yes. She has future schedules, uh, or future for myself and my children. I will have a house in, in the very no near future as I've been building my credit over the last two years. But previous, uh, but as I, uh, for over a year. Lily told me as of the last time I just picked her up that the light switch was okay. still broken. So, so ma'am, how, how much, ma'am, how much longer is this statement going to go? It's not, it's not, I'm almost done, sir. I just want you to hear okay. exactly everything so that you okay. can understand. All right. Go ahead. Finish it. Okay. I, I lost my place now. I where I told you I was going to send the attachment. I'm, I apologize, okay. but there were so many. In the Ma'am, are you riding? Or? Okay. That is my okay. mother-in-law. Right. I'm not driving. I have. I okay, can't I wanted to. I hear you. I know you're not driving. I wanted to make sure I could see that moving. I couldn't tell if you were driving. I cannot. I don't want anyone getting an accident during a hearing. I don't mean I'm just trying to show you I'm not driving. I, ma'am, you're, you're, oh, I, I thank you for that. And now you've clarified if you were driving, I was going to ask you to pull over because I don't want people getting in an accident during right. a hearing. I hear because you. Because they're trying to talk at a hearing while driving. I now yep. know you're not driving. I apologize. But the problem we're having here is there is a major disconnect in the allegations being made and the findings of independent third parties whose jobs are to intervene if these things are true, primarily child protective services, and now the family court psychologist, who I adjourned this for a week for you and your daughter to meet. His, his position is that he does not believe there is abuse happening and that Mr. Barrett's time should be limited or change of custody. So there is a big disconnect between what is being said and what is happening. And I do know that Mr. Barrett's had custody since 2021, November of 2021. So these are not new orders. Whatever is happening back in 2021 resulted in him being awarded custody. Then in 2022, that was for Liliana. In September of 22, another judgment of support was entered. This for your younger child, Lucy, who's now three. They paralleled in that judgment, the court paralleled the custody and parenting time for Liliana, which is the current parenting time, which is 16th Circuit alternate weekends, and then on the alternate weekend, you get time on Sundays. So what, for whatever reason, these, these investigative bodies are not finding that this is totally credible or it's highly exaggerated. Take, take your pick, but they're not finding that these things are happening. And that's their job to go in there and investigate. And my investigators and people that I look to to assist me are not, are not supporting what is being said. Now, Mr. Barrett, I may have asked this before. Do you and your fiance believe in corporal punishment? No, you're sorry. and I, I, what exactly do you mean when you say that, Your Honor? What is corporal slapping, punishment? hitting, pulling hair, restraining, choking? Corporal no. punishment is slapping, hitting, spanking. So no. when she's saying your daughter's saying she's being backhanded in the car by your fiance, slapped in the head, punished in any physical form is corporal punishment. Do you believe in that in your home? No, no, they do. They do. Get have you in the past? Have, they, well, spanking's corporal punishment. So what do you, when do they get spanked? That's, that's it though. That's well, there was an incident where Liliana had recently been suspended from school. Uh, not one, but two weeks. So back to back for fighting, putting her hands on other children because she didn't like that. It, so who spanks her? You or your, who spanks her? You or your spouse or fiance? Me. Fiance does not put her hands on any of my biological and vice versa, because I would like to say this reason okay. right here, Your Honor, um, is, is why. And we both know this, and there's no reason. I mean, those are my children. They step out of line. When it comes to that, I discipline my children. She disciplines hers. There is no abuse. There's no neglect. We love our children very much. My fiance, Shauna Benjamin, loves my two daughters like they're her own. She has spent numerous 
Connor, we have modified a bedroom in her home for my two girls. I mean, she took took and um, I mean, it, it, this is just it's crazy to me, honestly. These allegations. Okay. This is not. And so where, so where, this is, where are this Liliana? Is why parenting time where can't be cordial between her. Not that it's not. You know, we we do. But okay. Constantly, this you know this is a. And, and I mean, I. Uh, when she, as far as the pickup and drop off goes, um, that that is that is another load as well. She she's welcome to come to the front of the house. No one ever told her that she couldn't. It is on our property. She is not. Has your has your fiance screamed and, and yelled at her for it? Has your fiance screamed and yelled at her? She has. She has told her before to stay off her property. That she has been told before she's not welcome to come up onto our porch. And Mrs. Tour has had incidents where she why comes. Why is your fiance? You know, why is your why are your why is your fiance getting involved at all? Why are you not taking care of this? Well, I am, Your Honor, but we, we, our breezeway is right there. Like our front of our house is basically. So why does your fiance feel the need at a parent? She should say, Mr. Barrett, you go deal with Miss Tour. Why is she getting involved in screaming and yelling at her? Because she's on the breezeway. Why are you not intervening and saying, stay out of this, go in the house. You're going to make this worse for this dynamic. Stay out of it. I'm the parent. She's the parent. I don't need you yelling and swearing at my daughter's mother. Why don't you get involved and stop it? Well, I, ha- I have, Your Honor, I've had talks with Ms. Ben, Ben, my fiance. I've had talks with her about that. I've told her that she has to stop doing that because, you know, it's going to cause problems, you know, in the future. Yeah, and it's going to cause. When's the last time she yelled and screamed at Ms. Tour? Oh, this this has been a while ago. It had been months ago, Your Honor. I don't uh-huh. know. I think maybe like last last June or something like that. So, oh. I mean, it's not a constant thing, Your Honor. I don't, I mean, this is just. Well, crazy. it shouldn't be happening. Guys, it shouldn't be happening at all. Okay. And you should be taking care of all the issues and any discipline between you and your children. Oh, I, I and do. you should be involved with all the parenting time exchanges. Where are the girls right now? They're with Mrs. Tour. She's had them away from me since her holiday. Since on- and he's or- asked about them one time. One time. Oh, stop. I, that's not the question. Do not interject. Answer my question. When's the last time the children have been with their dad? You want me to answer, Your Honor? Or- yeah, anybody tell me the date because they're going back to their dads for the current schedule. That was June um June 30th. She picked them up for her weekend and then she kept them. I okay. agreed. I had them for my birthday actually. I picked them up on the 20th. Guys, stop. I've heard stop. If you guys can't even get your dates straight, we'll get them straight when you're coming to court to fight. I, I so they, she's had them a stop. She's had them a couple of weeks. That's her summer parenting time. They're going back to dads during the for the current parenting time schedule. So, guys, following is going to be my recommendation. You have 21 days to object. If no one objects within 21 days, this recommended order stays the order of the court. Even though I'm blunt, guys, and I will wait. I am talking. Do not talk over me. Guys, when I talk, you don't talk. When I talk, no one talks. If you can't follow instructions, I will no longer give you guys the luxury of appearing via Zoom, and you can appear in person in my courtroom. So if you don't want to lose the convenience of being remote, then honor the directives of the court and do not talk over me. I am speaking. Nobody is talking now but me. I am making my recommendation. You both have 21 days to object. Realize I will raise my voice if it is necessary to control my hearing room. And to get you guys to stop talking each over each other or me. It does not mean I'm mad. It means I need to have a clear record. So if anyone orders a transcript, my secretary cannot type three people talking at the same time. But I want to make clear, I am a referee, not a judge. If you do not like what I recommend, then file objections within 21 days. You will also be getting an objection procedure and ask Judge Dennings to review this. She is the boss. Judge Dennings can overrule or change any of the things that I order. That is within her power. She is the judge. So if either one of you, once I get done with my recommendation, don't like it, you have 21 days to object. If you have any procedural questions on how to follow the procedure you're going to get with this, you can call my office for procedural questions only. I'm going to do a brief statement of facts before I issue my recommendation. All right. The parties first appeared before this referee on August 7, 2023, on plaintiff's motion requesting modification of custody and parenting time 
of the party's two minor daughters, ages nine and three. Pursuant to the November 23rd, 2021 order of the court, physical custody is awarded to the defendant father with plaintiff mother exercising parenting time pursuant to the 16th circuit reasonable parenting time schedule. In addition to alternate Sundays from one to six, in addition to the schedule. New paragraph. Plaintiff alleges that defendant's fiance is physically abusive of the party's minor children. To August 14th to allow the party's daughter Liliana to be interviewed by family court psychologist Dr. Ross Beckley regarding allegations of abuse and whether he would recommend any limits to defendant's custody or parenting time. The order further provided that the front of the court custody department obtain the status of the party's interactions with child protective services. It is noted that similar allegations as set forth in the motion were made to child protective services in January of 2022, March of 2023, and June 30th of 2023 with the protective services denying I'm sorry with prior, but denying, denying the request to take action and finding no substantiation of the allegations Family Court Psychologist Dr. Ross Beckley further expressed his recommendation verbally to this referee that he could not substantiate allegations against defendant and there should be no limits to his parenting time. Therefore, one, the party shall follow the current order of the court in regards to custody and parenting time of their two daughters. Two, the party's minor children shall immediately return to the care of their father pursuant to the current custody and parenting time order. I will refer this for further investigation though with my custody department. Uh, three, the matters of custody and parenting time, however, are referred for investigation and recommendation only. Four, neither party shall use corporal punishment with the minor child, i.e. hitting, slapping, spanking, pulling, et cetera. Five, plaintiffs should provide defendant with the name number and address of any treating medical professionals or mental health professionals currently counseling the party's daughter, daughter or daughters. Uh, so he may participate in their evaluation and speak with the treating mental health professional. So guys, we have a saying in the court, if, if a mental health professional doesn't have, um, has not met with both parties, they're missing part of this equation. So sir, you should talk to them. If you're claim that these allegations aren't true and want to talk to them about these allegations. And I would expect you to be invested in it. And they should want to talk to Mr. Barrett as well to get his position as to a proper assessment of your guys' children. All right. So guys, we're going to email you a copy of this order and the objection procedure. You have 21 days to object. Again, you do not. Yes, sir. We're just uh, waiting for it to be transferred here so we can wrap everything up and those dismissals can be turned in right after the plea is taken so that we're not waiting on other prosecutors to deliver it to another court, sir. 
go on the record in the courtroom. So we're going to go on the record briefly in the courtroom. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. You ready, Olga? Yes, Your Honor. I'm calling case number 709532 in the matter state of Texas versus Ryan West. Deputy Garza, can you bring Mr. West right in front of the, uh, the mic, right here in front of my bench? And when I'm done with him, he's going to go back in the box. Sir, you're Ryan West, correct? You're in a court of law. There are certain protocols and there's rules in this courtroom. And just because I'm not sitting on the bench means that you can behave any which way you want. I got reports the last time you were here that you went out those two doors and knocked over county property, a sign, because you were upset that your attorney wasn't in the courtroom. That is unacceptable. That is contemptible. And I will not be putting up with your behavior. Do you understand me? That is your only warning. I can't take any action against you right now because your attorney is not present. But I can warn you. I can admonish you. You've been warned. If you behave like that ever again in this courtroom, you will be taken into custody for direct contempt of court. Do you understand, sir? Have him wait for his lawyer in the box. Off the record, old judge. I'm I'm present, Your Honor. Uh, I've talked to the prosecutor. They said that they need to gather evidence from the police department that has not yet been provided to them, and they're asking for another reset. Do you want August 29th or September 12th, Mr. Montgomery? September 12th. My August is looking pretty full. You got it. The case is reset to September 12th. I'm going to hold Mr. West here until you come into the courtroom and you talk to him about his uh, previous unacceptable behavior. I've already had that conversation. I was already there this morning, Your Honor. I'm okay. upstairs. Then Mr. The West is excused. He's ordered to return on September 12th. Thank you, Your Honor. May I be excused as well? Everyone is excused. I'm a connoisseur of hot chocolate. I'm like, this is carnation hot chocolate. I can tell the fake marshmallows that have been freeze dried. <laughs> <laughs>